Why, hello there, He-Men and Skeletoids alike. Sean Nelson here from Pen and Blade. And in this episode of Sketchorama, brought to you by the Bane. He was he was pointing out that I don't really show how to finish pieces. I show how to start them and get them maybe to a more refined sketch, but not how to take it to a more finished state. And I told him a couple reasons for this is because it takes longer, so that's why you see a lot of people do time lapses but don't do live videos because you're just kind of toying around painting. And um, the other reason is because I often don't have a composition that I find is uh, interesting enough to to go and finish the whole thing like here's one that i did that i kind of like i've been trying to do this is one that i want to maybe finish at some point he's squeezing a little sheep and um but it, it takes you know several hours it takes a while to get into it and here's another one i worked on for a while that i would like to finish at some point to refine it but and also what is finished you know like you could call it finished there if you want and have a sketchy style you go refine it to be it like very you know smooth and realistic and that would take a long longer um yeah so that's like another question so what i thought i'd do in this video is i'll do the guys this guy's head and face that shouldn't take too long and it'll give you the idea of how you can do this on your own and also what i will do is i'm going to do it in the simplest way possible on just one single layer well at two we're going to have the sketch layer and then underneath it you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to make a more refined sketch. So the first step, all right, I should have thought this out a little bit, but it's going to be okay. This is going to be pretty simple for digital artists. This is going to be the simplest like way I would recommend to get started. Is to find a piece you like and just choose one aspect of it. Maybe just an eye to start with. Maybe just the nose of a character that you drew that um, you, know, you, you, you think it would be cool to refine. So choose a dark color, a little bit saturated, I like somewhere, or you can do it desaturated, whatever. And you can choose the color. I don't like to go pure black as my point is the point I would make. And so here, let me go ahead and I'm going to make a more refined sketch. I'm not going to worry about it too much, but just so I know. I'm going to try to keep it simple because I wanted, you know, I want to keep this, this tutorial uh, video you know it's simple enough that you can understand what 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 the how to go further with it but um you know not and I, but keep i keep it in real time so i want to keep it in real time so i don't want to make it too long so i'm not going to worry about the proportions and stuff too much let's just double check it but whatever it's okay let's just go with what we got and this guy, so this guy's got his thing on his back that pumps through his chest, and it, it's a, like a coolant, I think, um, because he's like radioactive, and if he doesn't get cooled down, he'll overheat, but then when he turns down the cooling mechanism, then it see all this steam coming out of him, um, when he turns it off, then he, he starts to overheat, or overpower him, but it gets channeled into the glove, so that's his, like, super, super power superhero story all right and also let's just indicate where the plane changes are it's something you got to think about um because that's where the light and shadow will shift so and then also let's have the light coming from here let's say so i'm gonna have a shadow like that and you know let's have a shadow here all right that should be checked let's just start with that okay cool and then it's like yeah there should be a shadow or something I'm kind of making like, you know, keeping it on this side, but also just kind of making interesting shapes with a shadow. You know, going a little more intuitive than being super analytic. But on the things that hang over, like under here, it might be shadow too. All right. So now you got that basic outline. You can go under here and maybe we'll put this one above the sketchy layer. And let's do our flats. We're going to do flat colors. And if you're doing this all professionally, then you're going to want to do your flats on each layer uh you're going to want to do each color on a different layer so that you can apply the shadows and stuff really like smoothly and things like that there's a lot of people who do great videos on that just search um what would it be called how to do flats you know flats comic book uh comic book flats on youtube and you'll find some good tutorials on that kind of thing and uh, it's a pretty time consuming method, I think, because you have to create layers and it just gets like, you, know, you have to stay organized with them. So um, maybe it's just something I have to learn. So I'm just going to keep it like, see, this is pretty simple. We'll have one color here. 
And then let's do one color for the hair. Let's do a yellow color. I don't know why that's what I'm seeing. Probably because it's like guile. It's a little saturated. And you know what? Look, so you could you could do it all flat, but if you're just painting it yourself, you can you don't have to you know, I can do some of it more saturated than it and I'll mix it up with a more painterly style. But I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it simple for now. Really simple. And I think it's best to like, yeah, set your goals pretty simply, and then once you get to a point, you can just duplicate the layer, and you're like, okay, this looks cool, and then experiment further from there. So one thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn this to a multiply layer. That way it interacts with the layer underneath. I'm going to turn the opacity down, because pretty soon I'm going to merge these two layers. All right? And, um, yeah, I think I'm going to do it that way. I think that's just the simplest way to do it. One thing I might do actually is change the color of that, but we'll we'll see. No, you know it's fine the way it is. Oops. Okay, let's put the um. You know, let's put a like bright yellow on his eyes so it's glowing. All right, and I think that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll duplicate both these layers. The reason I'm making it uh okay, you know what? We'll put them in a folder. And I'll duplicate that folder. So we have this as backup, and we can make this disappear. I'll keep the bottom sketch. And then I'm going to flatten this. So now this is all just one thing. Doot, doot. And you can start just working with it like a painting. Um, one thing I might do actually is like, okay, so if you have a background color, so let's, where would he, let's, I don't know, should we just do a sky blue color? Or should be a dark, it should be a darker color. You know, you choose a color for the, for the background, and you can start getting rid of the lines, you know, by painting over like that, for instance. And see now it's like, oh, that doesn't look quite right. So you come in in here and you take the nose and you start sculpting it. And you say, oh yeah, okay, so I can do a nose like this. So you can work work with the sketching and then you just come over like a selected the skin color again. So at this point there's no erasing. I got my left hand over here on this button over there. Oops, can you see it? Over there. And uh, I click it down and I select the color I want. And then click it down, you know, select the color I want. And so one thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to give it a shadow. And the way you do this is you decide if your shadow source is gonna be if your light source is warm or cold. So let's say, um, you know what, let's say the light source is cold, coming from the moon. White is a cool color. The sun you, is warm, it's yellow, and most colors are, are yellow unless there's like a blue light or something. But the white light of the moon can be cool. So then we'll make his, so hold on, let's select his skin color again. And then since the light is cool, we're actually going to want the shadows to be warmer. So we're going to move slightly over to red where it's just warmer. And then we'll bring it down a little more. And this can be our shadow color. And we can just fill in that area we decided we want it to be the shadow. And you can see, one, one tip I'm going to give you guys is you can see how uh, a painting, paintings always seem to go through, I mean, maybe not for everybody, but for most people, I think, an ugly phase where it looks like it's just terrible. And I think a lot of times, as long as you've got a good idea or you like the thing you, you've decided to paint, you've got to power through that, um, that fear of the ugly phase and know that you're going you're gonna to find your way through. So here, maybe under the chin, I want it to be even darker. So let's get it darker and even warmer. And instead of having a line, I'm going to try to make the plane change like that. This neck's a little thick, so maybe we can just bring it in like that. It looks a little better. And then instead of these brown lines, I'm going to start to try to cover that up with this darker shadow. And I think you can see now how this is shaping up and how you could just keep going, you know, forever if you want. You keep on refining it, keep on adding details and subtle plane change shifts and differences and whatever. See, maybe right around where the light, where the two planes meet, 
which I think can be the darkest area, which uh, makes it more dramatic as well. Okay, and I don't know if this is, let's do the, the, the hair, so I'll give you another idea. So again, we're going to go, this would be cooler towards the blue, so we're going to go warmer towards the orange. We're going to make it a little darker. And I'm going to make the brush bigger. So you wouldn't like, offhand, you might think, oh, it should be a darker yellow. You wouldn't think it's like, look at this brownish color, it's almost a skin color. But I think, if our theory, maybe I went too far. Hopefully it'll work. Let's just try it out. We can always undo or you know what the other thing we can do is we can fill it in. Alright, so let's see. Does that look good? No, maybe not. Maybe it is too much like his skin color. Alright, I think perhaps I did go too far. I mean it doesn't look actually it doesn't look bad, but um let's let's try some stuff, okay? And that'll give me a chance to show you guys that you can just go, okay, it's like this color. I say we want it a little more yellow, move it over that way, and we're going to take this, drag it, drop it, and see it goes on everything, and then move it, and move it so it just affects that area. Maybe that's a bit better. But you notice how behind his ears it needs to be darker, that's for sure. We need more shadow there, so let's, let's add that. And then I think I'm going to add one more feature on top just to show you how you can get creative even at the painting stage. You could even start off with the painting stage. Um, I guess maybe not. I wouldn't recommend it if you've never done it before because it might be frustrating. That's what I've, I've tried it and it didn't really work for me. Uh, easier to start off with a simple drawing and then flatten it out once you've colored underneath and then kind of work away the lines. Um, so I'm not, you know, I don't know. This is now, this is why I don't think I make videos because right now I'm just experimenting. And I don't love the way it looks, but, you know, I think if I just keep working it and working it, I'll find something I like. Maybe I'm actually going to accentuate this and give it more, make it even crazier. So let's see here. This is a way I could, you know, this the shape of the hair could be like that. No, that's, that sucks. Let's take it back. Let's take it back a couple of notches. Maybe he could have one hair coming out like a Super Saiyan. Though. Let's see what that looks like. See, so yeah, I grabbed some of this yellow. I'm going to shade it the same way. I can grab some of this darker one and give it a dark shadow right there to differentiate it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Maybe I don't like it. I just decided, all right, I'm just going to paint over it with the background. All right. And that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, I wanted to add one more feature just to kind of demonstrate how you can. Uh, and it's nice to have gradients, too. So this background's pretty flat, so I could come here and say... Let's make this a little bit darker and bluer. And then, oops, that's maybe too. This is the opacity on the left there. Maybe lower the opacity so it looks a more. Go a little. This is where you just kind of get creative, you know, figure out, okay, if there's going to be. If it's darker, that means they'll have more contrast, which is usually a good thing. Maybe I'll come in here with some white, give it a highlight, give it a highlight. Well, sometimes you, you know you would do these on different layers. The shadows on one layer would multiply. And I've done videos on that. They're not my most popular videos, but I think they're very helpful. Um, it's like simple ways to digital paint. I have a digital painting playlist you'd be able to find. Look at how big that forehead is. It's glorious. Oh, the light source is white. Yeah, so good. So I, so I can use the um, white as a light source. So you got to remember that. Like if I used yellow as a light source, then it would kind of throw off the shadows. The shadows wouldn't look right, I don't think. All right, cool. So what one little feature? Let's put a gem in his forehead. I was like doing gems. They're fun. So what color gem? Let's do a, you know, like a reddish gem. Uh, it would be good. Or should we do, or we'll do an orange one since it's kind of like, it seems to be, it'll match his hair. So you could just go in there and be like, pew, 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 and then let's say, all right, what is it gem sitting in? Is it sitting in like a, so I'm going to see how I grab another color from here instead of choosing color out of the blue. I just choose a color from here and I can modify it to make it darker. At least that way it'll kind of fit with the color scheme I've already established, even if it's just by accident. All right. And then, I don't know. Let's get this thing attached to his head. All right. That's it. I don't know what that is. Um, it's... You know, you should probably give your designs a little more thought. 
And then let's grab a blue color here, and I'm going to do it lightly, and then I'm going to sample it. And I'll use that. Hopefully that comes off as like a metallic. See, I don't really know what happened there. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. The, the gemstone should be inside, so let's kind of I'll just wrap it around a little. And then I'm going to grab a, a cooler color, or no, a warmer color, and uh, go darker for the shadow. Give it a little volume. And then I will grab some white for the highlight. Make this really small and just do some little zing, shiny highlights. All right, maybe I take an eye and I'm going to sculpt this a little bit wider. Maybe I use some of that. You know, it's shining. It's so bright, it's shining uh, on his nose. I'm making some light shine on his cheek, his upper lip. You know? And then you just kind of, oh, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. So now we're using different kinds of light. I think light's a, you know, light is a huge thing. Maybe I want to go and I say, you know what, let's accentuate this. You know, let's try to make it even, let's make it more saturated and more red. And then since I'm doing something crazy, let's just duplicate this whole layer, turn that all off behind. And now I can just do this, and if it looks bad, you know, I'll just uh, go back to the, the last version. That's kind of interesting. Just kind of have fun with it, you know? And so painting can be really fun, but it's more of a thing that you like. I feel like uh, I always wondered why people don't make more digital painting videos that show the whole process. And because I think the process is a bit of a winding road sometimes. So it can be hard to, to, to pin it down and to say, hey, this is the way you do it. Because there are different tools and different solutions for different problems. Like, I don't know, I don't like how that's kind of blending together. So what if I bring some yellow in here? What would that do? I don't know. Yeah, I think it looks fine actually in some for some reason. Um but I don't know. See I would experiment and stuff. Alright, so I think that's it, or maybe I should blend it completely so that you can't even see the line at all. Where his hair and his body become no, that's kinda of creeping me out. Maybe just make a line, maybe just a dark line here. Anyways, I think you get the idea and um John let me know if this like was helpful and also uh, i left another comment on discord for you anyways we'll talk there and if anyone else has any comments or like you know what, what you think this channel is missing and stuff like that let me know this is actually pretty cool and then once you get started i, I know okay here's another little thing once you get started painting and then it gets a, it starts to get really fun so hold on let's see i'm gonna like right now i could just start coming here and let's put some of this this fog coming out. Like that. And then, oh yeah, and sound effects. You gotta make sound effects or talk to yourself and be like, this guy's just J -j -j -j. Frizetta did it, and uh, this drawing force guy talks about how that's important. If you're not saying it out loud, just in your head, you know, just being like this billowing smoke, just like, look how thick it is. So let me add some shadows to show how thick this this crazy smoke is it's coming off from his coolant system at first i thought it was just a mist but no and this is how you can start to develop the painting more and more and you can kind of see where it goes or you can take a more uh, measured approach and finish the whole drawing and plot out you know which colors you want where and stuff you could do a couple color study let me know if you want me to show you a video of how I might do a color study. I'm not like the best at it, but I can show you the basics. And I think that's it. I think I'm going to leave it alone for now. But yeah, I actually kind of like how this was turning out. So you come in here and I'll sample the middle color and use that to paint out a little bit. Or maybe make it thinner to get some detail on this uh, cloud over here. And uh, you could use the smudge. I don't like using smudge too much. But in some instances, just using it tastefully, because I think, feel like if you use the smudge, everything gets all blurred together, and I don't know, it just kind of looks amateurish, I'm not sure why, unless you're able to do it really well. So that's the thing, if you want to get stuff really, like, photorealistic and nice and smooth, then you got to learn that with the proper technique. People do that, though, as well, just using the brush. Um... So anyways, you'll have to explore, there's tons of digital painting techniques, that's another reason why I haven't made them, because I don't... I don't know if I've 
figured out mine. See, I don't like how that looks, so I'm just gonna go and paint it over Alright, cool. I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.